All right, Eric here with KitchenFoundry.com. Today we're taking a look at a Marvell kegerator that is cooling to the point of freezing the beer inside. Now, Marvell was originally manufactured in Richmond, Indiana. Later, the plant moved to Michigan. At some point, the Aga Food Group came over and bought this company, and now it's been purchased by Viking. These were produced anywhere between 1985 to present time. The really old systems have <clears throat> what we call an auto defrost. That's why you see these frost patterns here at the top of the refrigerator. Now, forced air is a better system because it's got a fan that's constantly circulating the air. So the liquid inside the refrigerator is going to stay at a constant temperature. The auto defrost was a bit different. So your drink is sitting there and you want to set your temperature point at 37 degrees. The refrigerator compressor kicks on in order to get this machine colder and it drops it down five to seven degrees lower than your intended set point of 37. Once that refrigerator is satisfied, it cycles off and now your temperature starts to naturally climb back up above your desired temperature point about five to seven degrees warmer. Now there's a little device inside this refrigerator called the thermistor and send a message to the thermostat that the machine is satisfied and to stop warming or to stop cooling. We've seen these break in two different ways. The machine might get warm or the machine might freeze up and the refrigerator will never turn off, ultimately freezing everything inside. This is why the forced air design is a better design than this defrost. We sell Perlick today. Perlick machines are all forced air. So today we're gonna to be replacing the thermistor in this machine. The thermistor is located right up here behind this screw. It might actually be a Phillips, but this one happens to be a hex. So we're gonna go in here and loosen up. It's just a single screw that's holding this thermistor in place. And we're gonna walk around the back of the machine Now you're going to notice a series of screws that are going to enable you to take off this rear galvanized sheet. We're going to need to remove this in order to gain access to this thermostat. You notice this portion here, it's just like a little bit of putty that comes right out of this hole. Right here is our thermistor. As we pull this guy through the hole, we're going to see that it is just a passive device that has a mechanism in it sending a signal down to the thermostat telling it when it needs to turn on and when it needs to turn off as we follow it on down you're going to find our thermostat is right down here as we tilt the camera underneath you're going to get to see it from a different vantage point it's just a couple of spade connectors right here to replace this part and you'll see that this thermostat here has different dip switch settings. Marvell used those settings to adjust this to whatever machine you were purchasing in order to govern how cold that machine was going to get. As we take a closer look at this part, when it's not underside the machine, you can see that these two spade connectors here are the thermistor, and then these two connect to the pot. The pot is on the front of the machine is the rotary dial to control temperature. Then we have these four dip switch settings. So these settings could be changed for whatever model it was that you were servicing. This happens to be a wine unit. On wine units, you didn't want it to get as cold because uh, wine, you don't want to reach temperatures of say 33 degrees. This is the kegerator setting, probably the coldest setting of them all. You can actually look up all these old Viking model numbers and they're still valid on the internet. You can see some pictures of them. The really, really old Marvells had a gas thermistor. I'm not sure you can even get these anymore. So if your machine has this metal tubing at the end, that pretty much predated the thermistor I'm showing you in the video. So using the thermistor shown in the video, you're gonna screw it back down to the cold plate and put those two terminals on this guy here and of course the power for the machine wires up back here now the reason we're doing this repair today is because the machine got cold it ran and ran and ran and never cycled off so it's usually only the thermistor that needs to be replaced 
having overlooked hundreds of repairs on these. Usually it's just the thermistor. Occasionally, if this is screwed down in a place where moisture got to it, moisture dripped on top of it and damaged it, you may need to replace that and the thermistor. Um, but those are the first things I'd try if I didn't have diagnostic tools with me to go any deeper. Uh, if the machine's gone warm or if the machine's gone cold, the most common reason is the thermistor. There are some other reasons why a refrigerator could stop cooling for you. One of them is a gas leak in the sealed system. And that's going to be a much more expensive repair. Essentially, these little holes can be microscopic. It could be leaking gas for a long, long period of time. And the beer gets warmer and warmer and warmer over time. And then all of a sudden, one day, the refrigerator is warm. In those cases, if you have a service company out, they're gonna to explain to you they've gotta take all the refrigerant out of the lines, they've gotta replace the dryer, they gotta recharge the system, and of course they gotta find where that leak is coming from, which isn't that easy to do. So you might be taking a little bit of a gamble there because if the service company can't find all of the locations that it's leaking out, they could recharge it. It might run for another year or two and then go warm on you again. And I know those costs can be anywhere from $400 to $500. Um, they know how to tap into that sealed system and then weld it up. Uh, here is another cheaper solution I don't recommend uh, for guys that don't have the equipment with them to seal up these copper lines. They use these bullet piercing valves. And so it clamps onto the valve and you can thread a hole to a little adapter that allow you to pump in some extra uh, refrigerant. Unfortunately, these have a tendency to leak over time too, so I don't recommend this. But if, if it's a free option to you and you have one handy and you know how to fill refrigerant, maybe you wanna try that to get a little more longevity out of the machine. A telltale sign the machine's running low on the refrigerant if you're noticing the cooling pattern is frost on the left side and no frost on the right side, in other words, uneven frost patterns from left to right, that could be a sign that your machine doesn't have a thermistor problem, but it's actually running low on gas. Now here we're looking at a later generation Marvell. They've gone now to digital control. You can see the model and serial on these identification stickers on the side walls of the unit. If your identification sticker is down here, it's going to be very hard to read because it's kind of out in the element under the gasket and they would rub off over time. And you really should have your model number in order for, um, in order to order a replacement. So by this time, they had gone to a forced air system. What's better about forced air is that it constantly circulates the cool air so your temperature isn't really going up and down a couple of degrees as a defrost machine cycles on and off. Instead, it's constant temperature. And um, you'll see when we close this door that all of a sudden our fan has turned on and it's putting forced air through the system to keep all the liquids at a constant temperature setting. You're gonna to need to order this from Middleby Residential. I'll put a link in the below in the uh, clip details. You're gonna be purchasing a replacement thermistor. In order to get that thermistor, we're gonna need the model and serial number. You should find this Marvell tag somewhere on the machine. I wanna tell you that we have seen these failures in the field. Marvell doesn't actually make the particular thermistor that was in this machine. So some of them had a higher failure rate than others. It's not any indication that this machine is not quality. It's a fairly inexpensive part. This machine happens to be a good 25 years old and it's still running strong. Feel free to give a thumbs up and subscribe so this good information can get in front of others. If you have questions about this, feel free to leave comments on this video. I monitor this channel daily and will respond with information. If you've got a machine that is unfixable, we do sell Perlic at kitchenfoundry.com. Top right hand corner of the screen will be a link that will take you to our website. Thank you for stopping in today.